Now at 10, one person is dead and several others injured after a rollover crash in Jones County. What we've learned from emergency responders on the scene ahead. If you got rain earlier today, you're going to get some more. I've got all the time you need to know on tonight and tomorrow's rain coming up. And later, crowds flood the Hub City for the 25th annual Downtown Crawfish Jam. How these culinary critters help raise money for the Historic Neighborhood Association coming up. Your news at 10 starts right now. Tonight, WDAM 7 News is proud to be on your side with WDAM 7 News at 10. Now at 10, one person is dead and two others, including a child, are recovering from a rollover crash in Jones County. You can see the area of that crash right here on this map. And this took place on Highway 84 East at the Masonite Lake Road exit around 1.30 this afternoon, shutting down traffic at the intersection for almost two hours. And here's a look at that scene where firefighters with m and Powers, Glade, and Rustin Volunteer Fire Departments found two vehicles rolled over onto one onto his roof and one disabled at the intersection. Each vehicle was carrying three people. Two appeared to have been ejected. Jones County Fire Council Public Information Officer Dana Bumgardner tells us one person was pronounced dead on the scene. That person's identity has not been released at this time and two others were taken to an area house pair with serious to critical injuries. This scene was not fully cleared until 420 this evening. This crash remains under investigation and stay with us for developments. Switching gears now, Nick, the rain has poured all evening here at the station and then there's more in store overnight. What can you tell us? There is more in store, but we get a brief break. You know, interestingly enough, some people got rain today, but some people did not. But that's going to change, Trey, for tonight. We've got round two coming up. So let's take a look at Walt Massey Ford here in Marion County. You notice that it's a cloudy night for many of us, but eventually that cloudy night will turn into a rainy night. So for today, we had some totals as high as about two inches there in southern Forest County, uh, close to its southern border there. But by and large, some of those totals are going to add up as we see round two coming up later tonight. A lot of that, a lot of those storms are off to our west, and I've got everything you need to know about those later. The good news is, is that once the rain chances go away tomorrow, we'll see a nice drying period coming up for us, and we'll enjoy some nicer temperatures before the the inevitable warmer and muggier temperatures resume. All right, thanks a lot, Nick. Well, a Hattiesburg Music Festival, which raises money for the Hub City's Historic District, is celebrating its silver anniversary. Our Charles Harrington has more on all of the country, R&B, rock and roll, and Zydeco that can be heard at the Downtown Crawfish Jam. They've been dancing to the tunes at Walthall Park every spring for the last 25 years. It's an event that now we're seeing people that come every year from all over the southeast, you know. Yeah. Um, people who have come before, they're like, oh, we're coming back, we're coming back, with families. It's, it's a great time. The great time at the annual Downtown Crawfish Jam was all about the music and the all-you-could-eat crawfish. It's real fun. Me and my husband and my son come every year. What brings you out to the festival this year? Great food and great music. And spending time with the family. This family event raises money for historic preservation in the downtown area. This is the largest fundraiser for the Hattiesburg Historic Neighborhood Association. Um, the Neighborhood Association owns this park and the Walthall Community Room, and so the funds that we raise from this event every year help us to maintain the property and the building. Saffel says the event brings in more than $20,000 every year. Charles Harrington, WDAM7, on your side. And the Crawfish Jam began back in 1999 as an event called Medical Mud Bugs, which raised money for various nonprofit organizations. And the crawdads were also in the pot at this year's downtown Laurel Crawfish. Over 5,000 pounds of crawfish were cooked by 20 different vendors at this year's festival. The festival was put on by the Laurel Main Street Association and the Laurel Sartoma Club. Organizers say it's a chance for everyone to come out and see why people love the mud bugs. 
Everybody comes out to cook. We have 5,000 pounds of crawfish that we ordered. So there is a ton of crawfish, a ton of different ways it's prepared, a ton of different add-ins. So everybody has their little twist on it, um, how they cook it, what they put in it. So it's a great way to kind of come see all the creativity that's at work here and you know get a belly full of crawfish. Proceeds from the festival went toward revitalizing downtown and other areas in Laurel. H2O Innovation took home Best Crawfish, while Down South Simmer Crew claimed People's Choice and Best Cafefe and Spirit. An annual event celebrating independent business and the love of music also helped provide forever homes for homeless pets in Hattiesburg today. Record Store Day 2024 was also known as Record Store Day of the Dog at T-Bones Records and Cafe in Hattiesburg. The event had great deal for music lovers and it featured lots of adoptable dogs from the Hub City Humane Society. Southern Prohibition Brewing also provided a special craft beer for the occasion, which proceeds going to the animal shelter. A record Store Day after its founding was right around the same time that the sort of vinyl renaissance began too so we both run in tandem with each other on this and now it's become a celebration of independent record stores like ours worldwide it's been so much fun doing the day of the dog event um we've had lots of fun talking to people talking music listening to music hanging out with some cute puppies and having a great day david says less than a dozen independent record stores across mississippi participate in a record store day well, day two of homecoming continued today at William Carey University. Things got started on Friday with an open house event as well as an Alumni Hall of Fame ceremony. Day two included a campus cookout at King Center, at the King Student Center, followed by the announcing of this year's homecoming court. Senior Savannah Wright was named homecoming queen. Wright is a music therapy major and says the announcement caught her by surprise. I wasn't expecting it. I'm, I'm very humbled. Um, I am so excited to represent Carrie in this way. I'm so excited to represent God in this way. I, um, I love this school and I'm very, very excited to be able to represent it in another way. Homecoming festivities wrapped up with a sports hall of fame ceremony and four people were inducted, including three alumni members of Carrie sports teams. And on the coast, today marks the 14th anniversary of the BP oil spill on the Gulf Coast. Also known as the Deepwater Horizon oil rig explosion, the disaster sent more than 4 million barrels of oil into the Gulf Coast of Mexico and killed 11 workers. Damage was extensive, including destruction to islands, wetlands, and marine life, specifically Mississippi oysters. Mississippi Department of Marine Resources Executive Director Joe Spragan says the oil spill and the two openings of the Bonnet Carey spillway have only continued to cause repercussions to our blue economy. A lot of the grasslands, you know, we uh, in the marsh and all, you know, had a lot of devastation there because the oil get in and it would kill the grasses and uh, also kill what was in the grasses, the little, uh, you know, microorganisms that all grow in there. It impacted our fisheries and it's mainly the oysters because the oysters were impacted pretty hard uh, because the oil got on them and uh, caused issues there. The Gulf Coast has received hundreds of millions of dollars to put towards restoration through the Restore Act. And Spragan says the Department of Marine Resources is working with the Department of Environmental Quality to replenish oysters. But it's going to take all of us working together to protect the Mississippi Sound. And you can help by not boating or jet skiing near island grasses. These areas protect our estuaries and marine life, and they help stop island and shoreline erosion. Well, coming up at 10, celebrations on Capitol Hill, how representatives are reacting after passing a $95 billion aid package as Russia attack on Ukraine intensifies. 